So are you in your dream job, or pursuing your perfect career, or are you in a bit of, you find yourself in a bit of a rut? Well, worry not, because tonight we've got ourselves a careers special. Think of it as a DXB Today careers fair, and here is what's coming up. We sent Lane down to the International Centre for Culinary Arts Dubai. He's going to learn to become a chef, which is slightly concerning. Yes, and we learn how to pivot, pause or plateau in our careers. And that's with executive coach Natasha D'Souza coming up on the show. Yeah, plus we've got one of our very favourite performances from our uh, favourite musical venue in the city to close the show. A lot of favourites there. So <laughs> good to have you guys with me this evening. Looking forward to what promised to... Should we have a career fair? Should we have a career Let's fair? Let's have a career fair. A career I fair. genuinely want to know what you wanted to be when you were younger. What did you want to be when you were older? Uh, I come from a military family, so the sort of onus was on joining the military when that sort of didn't go according to plan. I wanted to be a lawyer, then I worked out that you had to study for many years to be a lawyer. Then I wanted to be a journalist, and I became a journalist. I mean, I also came from a military family, and for that reason, I never wanted to be in the military <laughs> ever in my life. Oh, really? Well, I had a drill sergeant in the house, so I didn't, I didn't want to make a career out of that. Uh, I actually think, I still think if this all crashes and burns, I think I'd make a good teacher, I'd like to be a teacher. <laughs> You actually would make a good teacher. Faris attempts to teach me Arabic every now and again. All right, get this. So I was really into Indiana Jones. I wanted to be not only just an archaeologist, I wanted to be specifically an Egyptologist. Is that why you became a real estate agent? That's why I became a real estate agent, yeah. Real estate agency. In Cairo. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I was a real estate agent in the UK and then brought my skills and professionalism to Dubai. I mean, there's specific and then there's... <laughs> Egyptologist. Like Jovery, basically. Uh, what do you mean, Egyptologist? No one grows up saying I want to be an Egyptologist. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Tom, but I did. Well, maybe if you still <laughs> want to be an Egyptologist, you can get some advice from our guest co-host, who's going to be joining us very soon. But who is it, though? Hi, I'm Samia. I'm the founder of Unwind the Grind. I'm a career and leadership coach, and I'm super excited to be on the show tonight. Samia will join us right here in just a sec. But before that, like I said, Lane headed down to check out ICCA Dubai's culinary classes to see if he has what it takes to make it as a professional chef. Let's take a look. Since 2005, the ICCA have been shaping, molding and creating future chefs. Now, this is something that I've always wanted to do and be a part of. And the best thing about being in the culinary school is there's always something to see and learn. And of course, <laughs> always something to eat. Yeah. This one as well. Yeah. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Um, I've had a look at your facility and I absolutely adore it. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a passion, it's an obsession, I would say, when it comes to food and learning about food. So what does the ICCA actually participate in the whole Dubai culinary scene? Uh, first of all, thank you for coming. I'm glad you like uh, like the uh, the uh, I mean your experience today at the ICCA. Dubai is well known in selling its dream, and so we are the one of the early adopters and adapters of this dream, and we believed in uh, what the big vision was all about. I'm glad that we did about 18, 19 years back when people were still uh, not sure. But I suppose the decision that we made is basically making all the difference today. Thank you so much, and uh, you're seeing a lot more of me in the future. Oh, looking forward to your most welcome, and this way, uh, you know, food happens. And if you want to become a great chef or something to do for some personal culinary learning, this is the go-to place. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. So tell me more about the ICCA. Why is it such a leader in the region when it comes to learning and, and teaching students? What we are doing here is um, teaching the new generation, right? The new generation, the upcoming uh, chefs in the in, uh, industry. Um, they get, they're young, they're old. It doesn't really need to be a certain age. What we do is we bring this part of um, maybe a dream 
maybe they have a dream. Maybe they thought they never could do it. And we bring that alive in them. My background's from the Caribbean. So uh, whatever we're going to be doing, I'm going to put a bit of a Caribbean twist on it as well. I hope you don't mind. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I'm excited. All right, <laughs> let's do this. So I have here um, a bean a ragu. And then also we have this beautiful piece of Norwegian salmon. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. So what we will do is you can add this butter into the pan. All at once. All at once. So next is our little bit of carrots. That is a cut called brunoise. All that hard work in the kitchen has amounted to this. Yes, it looks fantastic, but does it taste fantastic? Let's see. Chef Michelle said that I've done quite well. I've got a hat to prove it. That's my reward, but here's the real reward. Let's go. Oh, the smell, the way it just melts in the fork, oh. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to say what this actually tastes like. I'm going to host a dinner party for all my presenter friends to come to my house and I'll cook this dish. I've learned some new tips and tricks. Thank you, ICCA. Hey! Lane there, praising his own cooking. Uh, <laughs> good on you, Lane. Um, and I think that was an invite for dinner, wasn't it? I think it was an invite. He said his presenter we'll wait for friends. it in person, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, that's it. I haven't got the invite, that's for sure. I don't know if anyone else has yet. Uh, good to see Liam back with us, though. Uh, right, today's guest co-host is the founder of the Millennial Career Development Platform with a mission to inspire the youth, helping people transition from dead-end jobs to a purposeful, thriving career. It's a warm welcome to Sunil Hassan to the show. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm fascinated by this, you know, because I come from the generation where, you know, if you did the sciences, you're going to be a doctor. If you did the arts, then join the job queue or whatever. <laughs> but you might become a journalist, whatever. Things have changed, haven't they, with That's the new generations. Um, what's the sort of recruitment landscape look like for millennials and Gen Zers now? Sure. So things have changed a lot. The biggest mindset shift that I see in millennials and Gen Z as compared to, let's say, Gen X or boomers, the previous generations, is that their careers are not a one and done. So they are not married to their professions or jobs for the rest of their lives. In fact, an average millennial or Gen Z will have 12 different careers in their lifetime. 12? Yes. Well, I thought it was two and a half. That's crazy. <laughs> 12? Yeah. 12 in a lifetime or 12 in a month? Well, in a lifetime. <laughs> but how does that actually look then? Because again, same generation, you know, I was brought up that you shouldn't have gaps in your CVs. And if there are even a month gap, there should be a pure explanation or why you're chopping and changing. That's changed as well. So how are employers looking at those? I think employers are far more flexible than before because with recessions and pandemics and wars and everything going on, you have to understand that when people pivot, they pause and plateau, which we'll talk about later, uh, they are reinventing themselves. So their careers are going to change throughout their lifetime in line with their skills, their interests, their passions and strengths. And it takes time to reinvent yourself, right? So millennials and Gen Z, for instance, are really open. They're open to explore, to experiment, to learn, to, to really pivot their way through from what I'm seeing from like TikTok and stuff from the younger generation is that they yes they are open to new things but also they have boundaries I think and they're very strict on like not working certain hours m working remotely what are the trends are you seeing absolutely so if I tell you the top five reasons what Millennials and Gen Z's choose when they choose choosing an employer number one is work-life balance Two is learning and development, then we have financial benefits, uh, workplace culture, and um, learning and growth opportunities that they see. So, so definitely, like eight out of 10 uh, millennials and Gen Z would choose their mental health and cite mental health as the key reason when they're choosing to As work for we're a seeing this happening, are we seeing an improvement in the workplace or is it mainly just benefiting the We employee? are, we are seeing, we are seeing. And so basically Deloitte runs a survey every year with millennials and Gen Z, um, you know, across 44 
countries, 22,000 people, and what they find is that uh, the young people are seeing organizations take initiative and make improvement across mental health. Uh, not all the resources are fully utilized, but they are making stride towards it. And what about companies? Do they have to, do they ignore that trend at their peril at the moment? Because times were, wasn't it? That, you know, mm. it was almost like you were, you, you were handing a job as an opportunity, etc. Now, if, if the companies are not taking that, if they're, if they're not grasping that, then surely they are missing the experience of a whole new generation. Absolutely. And that's why you see employee turnovers become less and less. An average turnover for millennials and Gen Zs is two years. So they switch after two years. Um, and in fact, when it comes to flexibility and remote working, which are, they're really big on, if 75% of them said that if they don't get flexible working hours, they're going to leave the company, the, the ones who are working remotely. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I find that fascinating because it's always like you should stay in that career and yeah. that your career. So tell us then specifically, what is it you do? I know I follow you on Instagram and I love your in terms of tips of, uh, you know, your best LinkedIn profiles and interview tips. But what else is it that we can find out from you? Sure, sure. So my purpose is to help these young people find their purpose. I heard you guys talk about, you know, when you were young, you wanted to be a doctor or a teacher. So really making sure that how uh, they can see themselves, understand who they are, know and own their truth, and then align a life and career that's aligned to who they are. Um, so I work with a lot of young people across the region and have been running my business for the last seven years. Uh, before this, I was working in the corporate world and I have transitioned myself and pivoted uh, when I didn't find enough meaning and purpose in what I was doing um, and did a lot of deep self-discovery work myself to become a coach and consultant. Yeah, and on that point about like LinkedIn profiles, how to impress and stuff, we have a unofficial rule here at DXB today that every episode we have to talk about AI. So I know people are using AI for CVs and for LinkedIn and stuff. Are companies finding a way around that? Are people ending up with bad employees because they're using AI to write their CVs? No, I don't think so. I think that the way the process is done at the end of the day, any AI tool you use, whether it's writing an email or a message or making your CV, at the end of the day, there's a human being, right, who is going to see it, scan it, interview you, see how good you are before the hiring decision are made. So hiring is not outsourced to AI, yeah, thankfully. I mean, I mean Faris and, and, and Katie make really valid points about the CV. I mean, our understanding of the CV was that you built it and you showed what your, the education was and then you moved up and et cetera, and it was linear. I mean, is, is the, given the fact the job market is evolving, is the CV evolving as well? Not so much, I would say, unfortunately. So the process of CV and the way, you know, you advertise for jobs and online application and there's an AI tool which is called application tracking software, the way it's all done is still very traditional. So let's say if there's a career changer who's changing, say, from HR to marketing or from a certain industry to a different industry, they their CV will not, uh, let's say, give them the best chance to be showcased because of the keywords and the way AI reads it, mm. you know? So if they don't have banking and finance all over because they've not done that before and it's a new career they're venturing into, it's not going to show. And hence what I teach a lot and work uh, with my clients a lot on is networking, which is how 80% of people find jobs globally. Mm. Sammy Hassan, thank you so much for being on DXB today. Unwind the Grind DXB on Instagram, is that right? Yes. And we hope to see you again. And of course, you're going to be with us for the rest of the show. But for now, we're very excited for our performer who's going to be playing at the end. But who is it? Take a look. So tonight, we're going to play one of my original songs. The song is called Love Is, and I hope you all love it. Uh, Mr. Vincent right here is going to be playing the drums. Uh, we have Isaac right here is going to be killing the bass tonight. And then on the keys, the extraordinary Mr. Kim. So after the break, we discuss current recruitment trends, job searching tips, and so much more. So please do stick with us.